Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone. For drivers who want to get the most out of their cars, it's Bridgestone or nothing. Dow Automotive Systems. Improving durability and increasing design flexibility with Betamate structural adhesives at DowBetamate.com. And by Hyundai. Experience the 2011 Hyundai Sonata today at HyundaiSonata.com. This is AutoLine Daily, but not the normal show you're used to seeing. For the rest of this week, we're going to be showing you some of the best of AutoLine Daily because we're moving our studios to a brand new building. So excuse our dust and please enjoy a couple of our favorite features. First up, let's take a look at some important automotive numbers. Then it's time for a pony car showdown. Enjoy. Car companies cannot come out with new products unless they spend the money to develop them. So we dug through piles of annual reports to find out which automaker invests the most money in R&D, which is where the car companies book their expense for new product development. We also looked at which companies spend the most on R&D as a percentage of their total revenue. So let's take a look, shall we? Seamus McElroy prepared this report. It's no surprise to see that the top three R&D spenders are also the three largest automakers in the world, Volkswagen, Toyota, and General Motors. VW spent over $9.2 billion last year, which is close to a billion more than Toyota, which spent a billion and a half more than GM. Looking at the rest of the list, there isn't much variation between where a car company ranked in R&D spending and how much revenue it brought in for the year. But if you look at R&D as a percentage of revenue, only VW remains in the top three. BMW and Honda jumped to the top of the list, each spending 5.5% of revenues on R&D, with VW just a tenth back from both. Perhaps the biggest shock is how far Toyota falls, nearly out of the top 10. It spends just 3.8% of revenues on R&D. Ford also takes a tumble, barely staying ahead of Toyota. Of course, Toyota is about to launch a product offensive, so these numbers could climb. With all the success Hyundai and Kia have had recently, it's surprising to see both companies at the bottom of the list in both categories. Does this mean Hyundai Kia could lose its momentum over the next several years with so little spent on research? Or does it mean they simply get more bang for their buck? We suspect it's the latter. Fiat and Chrysler are also at the bottom of the lists. Maybe Chrysler was holding back on spending while it was still partly owned by the U.S. and Canadian governments. If you combine R&D spending for the two, they're still middle of the pack. And as a percent of revenue, they're still at the bottom. For drivers who want to get the most out of their cars, it's Bridgestone or nothing. As promised, we're doing more direct power to weight comparisons. And the next segment we've honed in on is pony cars, more specifically, entry level V6 powered pony cars. We'll get to the eights later. We've collected vital statistics on the important cars in this segment and optioned them as closely as possible. These are the cheapest six cylinder versions available from their respective manufacturers. No options or extras included. On the docket, we have the Chevrolet Camaro LS, the Dodge Challenger SE, the Ford Mustang, and the Hyundai Genesis Coupe 3.8 R-Spec. All of them are equipped with manual transmissions except the Challenger. It's auto only with the V6 engine. Also worth noting, the Genesis comes standard with a turbo four-banger. Getting into a six-cylinder model is a $4,500 price premium. You know, it's a rare day when Hyundai isn't the best value in a comparison test. Front and center, each car delivers more than 300 horsepower, and in this department, the 2011 Camaro is number one by a narrow margin with 312. As for torque, the Mustang takes top honors, narrowly edging out the Chevy with 280 pound-feet. None of the cars have a big advantage in output. The real deciding factor in this comparison is weight. Straining the scales at more than 3,800 pounds, the Challenger is the biggest, roomiest, and consequently heaviest car here. The Camaro's not far behind. Mustang and Genesis are featherweights by comparison, clocking in at hundreds of pounds less than the Dodge and Chevy. 
Let's see what that means to the power to weight ratio. Surprisingly, they're all pretty close. The Genesis Coupe has the best score with the Mustang right on its heels. Predictably, the Challenger is the worst off, but again, not by a lot. The story is much the same when it comes to pounds per pound feet of torque. Look at those numbers. Even with six cylinder engines, these cars are performance machines. As for fuel economy, the Mustang takes the gold, coming in at around 19 around town and 29 on the highway. Amazingly, the Genesis delivers the worst numbers despite being the lightest car in this comparison. And this just shows you how fast things change in the automotive business. Well put, John. I couldn't have said it better myself. Hey, thanks for sticking around and make sure to check back tomorrow for even more great content on AutoLine Daily. We'll see you then.